My name is Tanya Georges. For a decade, I was an Islamic extremist. My ex-husband became a leading member of the Islamic State, and now I'm hoping to counter his ideology. In the late 1990s, Tanya went to high school here in Harrow. It's a middle-class, diverse London suburb. I grew up here myself and went to school just three miles down the road. I didn't know her at the time, but know many people who did. They've all described her as a pretty normal teenager. They say that she sometimes had boyfriends and played truant from school. She wasn't known to be especially religious or even politically engaged. So when did it all change? I turned to religion in my life when I was 17. I just wanted to change my identity. I didn't want to be Tanya from Harrow anymore. I wanted to be Salman Pai, someone that people didn't call a tart. So it gave me structure in my life that I needed and it helped me feel like I belonged somewhere, like a family or a community that embraced me. Um, as long as I complied to what they were comfortable with Islamically. In her late teens and early 20s, Tanya mixed with various radical groups in London. They changed the way she looked at the world. Our minds were just being filled with these images, terrible, disturbing images. They would give examples of what happened in Srebrenica and Bosnia. We were made to feel this shared sense of guilt because we're a community and it was our duty to do something, and that something was jihad. I looked up to Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, anyone that was trying to protect Muslims, protect the honor of the Muslims. What made me particularly depressed about 7-7 was that Shahara Islam was on the bus, and she had been a classmate of mine in my lower class. I just thought it was very unfair for somebody should lose their life that young. If an innocent Muslim dies and an innocent non-Muslim dies, it's, that's how we justified it. It's wrong, but that's the, that was the way of thinking back then. By the time of 7-7, seven, seven, she was married to John George Alas. He was an American convert she had met online. He was clearly intelligent. Um, he was charming. He was my first love, and we were best friends. My way of contributing was raising sons that would grow up to be in the Mujahideen army or scholars and academics. I wanted them to contribute to the cause. They moved to the United States and had children. After the Arab uprisings in 2011, the family moved to Egypt. John thought it was an ideal place to raise their sons as jihadists. But Tanya was starting to have doubts. One day, for some reason, one of my sons came home with a grenade to show me. And I don't think it was a working grenade, but it, oh, I lost my temper and pulled out my kitchen knife at John. I was like, don't you ever do this again. Don't, I don't want my sons near these things. I don't want them near the guns. In the buildings I stayed in, they were abandoned homes by ex-military. The windows had been blown out and every single night I, I had become accustomed to hearing gunfire. It was hard. I mean, I, my marriage was breaking down, so like, which was like my life at the time, and I didn't know what to do. There were bullets, like snipers, on these towers shooting, and we could see the bullets flying everywhere. And so, like, I remember, like, putting my kids through the barbed wire and the Syrian refugees. They were just guys. They were helping us as much as they could. And I put the stroller in, and then John passed me another baby. It was so scary. The last thing he told me, the last message, was that he apologizes for the wrong that he's done to me and the children, that he prays that we'll be Muslims, and that if I don't hear from him in six months, it's most likely because he's dead, because he has to fight, because the fight is 
uh, drawing closer to where he lives. It was a relief to come back and not have to practice Islam. And it was a nice break and it gave me the opportunity to just read other things. Like other than just focusing on one subject and one area, just Islam, I got to focus on now all different religions. I had the freedom to think. That's what America gave me um, without fear. How does it make you feel to look back at these photos and see your son and his father who have been separated for four years? It makes me feel really sad. Uh, I, feel, I feel worse for the children than I do for John because he made his own decision and he, he got what he wanted at the end of the day. I mean, I wish I could turn everything around and go back, but I've learned a lot from my mistakes. I mean, that's all you can do is I regret the choices that I've made, um, especially when it comes to my children, I just really wish I had had better intentions for them. I wish I had given them a stable lifestyle. Why should America give you a second chance, given all that you did to propagate extremism against this country. I didn't contribute to any violence, but and my ex-husband only did after I left him. I think they should give me a second chance because I realized I was wrong and I, I made a mistake. And I really want to make up for my mistakes. Always daddy, all day on my couch. I would like to pursue a career where I can help rehabilitate extremist radicals give them that sense of community and provide them skills and education so that they can reintegrate into society and be good citizens. Jihadists need to be heard because if we don't know their arguments and how poor their arguments are, we're not going to be able to discuss and refute them. I think knowledge will free people from this idea of thinking that war and jihad and violence causes progression. It doesn't doesn't achieve anything. If you were to meet a woman who was thinking about going down the same path that you once took, what would you say to her? I would say, I lost my family, I lost my home, I lost 10 years of my life that I should have, you know, been working at towards my education and a career. I have four children who don't have a dad now. Is this the situation you want to be in?